Okay, we're speaking with Diane Rico. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Diane is the Senior Vice Provost for Engineering and Technology at NYU, and one of her primary responsibilities is to be the Provost for Poly uh, it, during this transition period as it's still affiliated with NYU as it's merging into in the future with to become NYU Poly. So mm -hmm. thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm excited about the opportunities that you guys are creating in the Department of Financial and Risk Engineering. It's going to be a very, very exciting set of opportunities that are going to develop and, and we're looking forward to working with you to make them happen. Thank you. So uh, talk a bit about the uh, the merger with NYU and Poly. What's, how's that going? So uh, NYU is, a, as many of you know, a major research institution, and it didn't have an engineering school. Holly was a small, independent uh, school that, that um, was uh, trying to survive and do the uh, kinds of things that you need in a comprehensive university, and that's always a challenge, and you, with your risk analysis can probably guess what some of those challenges were. Um, and so it became the opportunity to be first affiliate, and because both institutions are over 150 years old, there were some cultural differences between the two institutions. So we had a transition time that we call our affiliation as we work toward aligning the policies, procedures, and some of the infrastructure, and then we will become a full school of NYU. And the target that we have for that um, is around the fall of 2012. So it's uh, very close timing and uh, exciting to, to be able to integrate all of the strengths of both institutions and all of the rich history that they both bring to the table. So talk about how uh, the goal here uh, is to create this global technological powerhouse blending pure and applied sciences, not just in finance and risk engineering, but beyond. Okay, so one of, one of the things that I find most exciting about the global concept is that uh, it seems to me that the world is indeed flat, as, as uh, Friedman has talked about in his book, and that the future is going to be international teams of all sorts of kinds of things, and particularly in technology, as we start capitalizing on the strengths around the world. And so one of the things that I particularly like about, about what's happening in Poly is that we have an international culture already built in at Poly, and so as part of the learning experience, people get exposed to people from all sorts of cultures and learn to work together, and we'll be able to call people up, or now I guess you don't call anybody anymore, you, <laughs> you text them and do the, the, the contact information, but you'll have people that you know around the world that will, will make it much easier to build these alliances, but you'll also have had the experience of working with other people from other cultures. So that's the, one of the pieces. The other piece, of course, is that we have the strengths now and, and strong collaboration with, not only with what Polly brings, but with the energy and, and the kinds of strengths that are available within NYU. And there's, there's very strong collaborations that have developed already that were in existence before the affiliation started, and those are strengthening and growing as we move closer and closer to being a school so that, that we have the advantages of the, of the strength and the and the size of what NYU is and continues to be mixed with the energy and the entrepreneurship that you have with Poly. And one of the important things that, to remember is that even after Poly becomes a school, all of the schools within NYU have a fair amount of flexibility and freedom and agility to be what they wish to be. So we will be able to preserve the best parts of Poly when we're part of NYU. So that's an exciting aspect. Um, one of the other things that, that Polly has done is to, to try to define four different areas of emphasis and strength, which we're calling grand challenges. Areas that we think we're already good at, we intend to focus more on as we grow forward. And, and so let me just run through those quickly, and I've got my cheat sheet to get to all the verbs right. So one is to map, secure, and extract information from the infosphere. And so you can imagine that that's huge. I mean, we have data, and you all in, in financial and risk engineering are mining the data for all sorts of reasons. So it's really important that we not only understand how to intelligently gather the information, but then how it is that we're going to assess it and utilize it to advantage. And certainly, um, the risks of not having that information secure could bring the world to its knees very quickly. So those are the areas in, in that particular um, emphasis 
that, that we're looking at and how it applies to uh, what you're doing in financial and risk engineering. Another one is to create intelligent sensors, and that probably has less to do with what you think about on a regular basis. But, but um, imagine if we could understand that a bridge was going to fail before it failed. Or imagine if we could have smart uh, technologies that would understand what the utilization of power from various places was so that we could turn on the right power generating devices at the right time and not have excess unused power when we don't need it. And there's many, many other opportunities like that. Another is to engineer smart cities. How is it that you could conceivably have people be able to drive without traffic jams? or be, by timing the lights and by timing the utilization and, and those sorts of things. And, and uh, again, lots of opportunities in the power grid and how you distribute energy and potentially could generate energy locally that you sell back to the power company when they need it. Um, lots of issues with water and groundwaters and, and transportation and just millions of things that you can imagine about smart cities. And then another one is to tailor biomolecular interactions where you could, for instance, understand the physiology of what happens in a disease and find that or sense that with some sort of molecule and then tie up the rest of the cascade so that you would never get that disease. And the couple that we're looking at, for instance, are in Alzheimer's disease and epilepsy. And if you could conceivably just on the fly, all the time, sense whether or not that's likely to occur and stop it, it would be phenomenal. There's all sorts of other applications in any of these. But, but the, the thing that's important is that all of these are exciting. All of them will shape the future. We need to have the help from people like you in financial and risk engineering to understand what the risks are associated with developing these and then, of course, the funding to help establish them. Um, because without either of those two, we could go down a path that would not be very productive. And um, so I'm very, very excited about what is happening, how you're evolving the program, how you're integrating the world in the program, and how it's a collaboration between lots and lots of different technologies, philosophies, cultures, and approaches. It's going to be great fun watching what happens. Wonderful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>